after dealing with a really weird amount of drama on Twitter, and much more recently, trauma, I feel like I could use a break from Monster High and touch up on what's happening with Rainbow High, especially since the season three has just ended. Not only did I have to deal with random Twitter drama, I also had to deal with the first hate comment I've had in, for the first time in probably years, telling me to put a hat on to cover my massive forehead. Buddy, I tried getting this thing certified as an airplane runway. A hat isn't gonna be enough to cover this up. That's the thing I can't stand about these people. If you're gonna be bigoted, at least be funny. That's how Dave Chappelle gets away with it. I think the best joke I'll tell this whole video is Dave Chappelle being funny. The season three finale of Rainbow High is here. Now in part one of this, I mentioned how I think the show has gotten better, but the dolls have gotten worse. I just can't get behind the black and white Thing. They all blend together. <laughs> but I want to know what you guys think before I continue. As a goth, Shadow High was the most confusing thing ever because I love monotone stuff, but none of the dolls really stood out to me. And then I realized that they need an assigned color that's sprinkled in because it pops. Our eyes like color. <laughs> now you can use black and white or unsaturated colors to create a good contrast, but most everything needs color. That's why the neon shadow dolls worked really well. They were the only ones with a splash of color in a sea of nothing. Tell me, if you're colorblind, how do you like these dolls? How do you how do you see these dolls? Are they like awesome? Do they look amazing to you? I don't know. Tell me in the comments below. I think the best executed purely black and white doll is Chanel Onyx. I love her so much and her dress is so pretty. I agree, her and Heather Grayson, I think stand out the most but Heather Grayson stands out just because she has snake skin. Chanel Onyx stands out because her design just works better with the whole black and white concept. Yeah, so like, yeah, Paris is a businesswoman, model, entertainer, and socialite, but I believe she most she's mostly known for her outfits back in the 2000s and basically created the It Girl and Bimbo Girls. She was one of the top five celebrities with, along with Britney Spears, Angelina Jolie, Lindsay Lohan, Rihanna, and sometimes the Kardashians, mostly Kim, back in the 2000s. Oh, I know, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of rich people who got rich by inheriting their wealth. Most famous people are in that boat. The Popper to Prince story is almost entirely absent in the modern day, but they know how to maintain that wealth. I literally learned in college while getting my business degree that Kim Kardashian is largely so successful because she is an expert at self-marketing. I'm not saying that Paris Hilton did nothing. I'm saying I don't think most rich people are ethical and I don't like them. That feeling when they give you something but not enough. Like I really expected them to do some alt fashion like Gothic Lolita, Gothic Y2K. Heck, even Visual K would be epic, but I guess when getting monochromatic looks, it just narrows it down to black leather studs and tears in the clothes. Oh my God, yes. Thank you. I can see the prom dress styles in this line of dolls, but they did drop the ball hard on the fashion. Now that you mention it, seeing a doll series tackle Visual K would be really amazing to see. This is the line of dolls that would have worked best if they branched outside of their comfort zone but they didn't. This whole line of dolls just feels like a gimmick. And that's because they didn't really take any risks. But enough of that, let's get to the last several episodes of this season. If you didn't watch part one, now would be a good time to do so. Remember that one girl that wants to be a songwriter? <laughs> yeah, neither do I. But one of the divas got her song and likes it, so good for her. It won't be a good look for Shadow High if we have a repeat of her first year fail. If you screw that up, just pretend like nothing happened and everyone will forget. That's how I got away with most everything I screw up. It's only embarrassing if you think it's embarrassing. Shouldn't Glitch not be allowed to perform since she's the MC? Like, just by the people seeing her on camera more than anyone else will shift favor to her favor. Her song is a big empowerment slash self-healing song, and it sounds like an actual song rather than a song they made for the show. If she wins, I'd be fine with that, actually. Thank you, Rainbow Vision. Now, without further ado. <laughs> She just slides right into introducing the next act. If this happened on real TV, I just assumed she was the halftime show. Or, wait, was she? Is she competing or is this just a little song for herself? I don't, I don't remember them elaborating on that. Ugh, whatever, I'll find out if she wins. More sabotage against Rainbow High and now our evil twins are the anti-hero twins? Also, ba a Bali performance is up next and it starts good, but there's some parts that really break the vibe of the song and it feels 
disjointed, so I'm a little disappointed. And I get the dance is supposed to be similar to the dances of that region, but it's still very stiff. I feel like they dropped the ball with this one. The Devious Twins are retaliating by doing their own sabotage. Now to be extra harsh on my judgment, since now we have the pop punk band Neon Shadow performing, or at least they would be if they weren't busy blackmailing each other since they both know that they've been sabotaging each other. And then the background character tells them that they should actually work together. And I don't follow his logic, but okay. Oh, the time you're wasting fighting could be put to making sure you all get what you want. Your school in the finals. And then we have this garbage. <laughs> It's songs like these that make me ashamed of being blonde, but blonde jokes are still funny. Leave your best blonde joke in the comments below. Next is the Kingsley Boys, which their song does sound like a boy band song. And honestly, I'm kind of into it, even if it's just boys talking about cars and being boys. It, it manages to catch the alluring boy band vibe well. This may be top three for me but given what we've been seeing, that's not a hard place to reach. Kingsley boys have just been asked to go on a worldwide tour. So the Kingsley boys are officially out of the Rainbow Vision competition. Ha! Of course. One of the few songs I like and they've been ejected from the show. I know it was the twins doing this, but still, that's funny. You know what we should do to get rid of the competition for a school? competition, we should set up their entire careers. That'll get them. If they have those kind of connections, why would they even care about the school anyway? Why are they even at school anyway? They could just start their career now. I mean, it's good that they're in school. It's just, you don't technically need to be. The whole point of school is to develop a uh, everything you need for a career. You should be in school. You should go through school. Most people go through school and have a career at the same time if they're if they're young. But it's just what? <laughs> Attention, everyone! The Rainbow Divas are breaking up. Oh, that's cool. I didn't care for your song anyway. And I think the Beatles suck. So you can tell by my based opinion that I have good taste in music. This isn't a joke. I think the Beatles are actually terrible. Rainbow Dream song is more up my alley. I can't tell if it's pop or just barely falls into pop punk, but regardless, it's got a slower tempo and there's really only like five lyrics. So the boy band is still the best performance so far. Heck, no, Glitch's song was better. There can only be three finalists, chosen 50% by the panel and 50% by the audience. You know, whenever I hear you vote for the winner, I never really believe my vote counts. I feel like it's rigged and they just put a bunch of bots to flood the poll to for the who to win for the studio to actually win that who they want to win. And I realize that sounds very similar to something else, but I mean for TV competitions, not you know. <laughs> the double twin terror breaks up the their alliance. This show is really all about these four characters, gosh. Neon Shadow, Rainbow Divas, and the Royal Three are in the finale. But I thought the Rainbow Divas were breaking up. So is there really just going to be like a top two? And Rainbow High, but the Royal Three are everything. I see Sunny hanging out with someone who's actually from Japan. And all I can think of is, oh, oh, uh, Gomena, sorry. Oh gosh, well, Konichiwa, Watashiwa Sunny Desune. Are you a real life Japanese girl? I know I'm cringe, but this is making me upset with how cringe it is. I happen to be a connoisseur of the animes. Clearly, someone who's only learned about Japanese culture online is more well-versed about your culture than you are. Would you care to be the Hinata to my Naruto? No. <sighs> I'm such a baka. <sighs> Hey, do you know the age of consent in Japan? The stage managers finally catch wind of the twins sabotaging everything, so maybe there's not going to be anything happening with them? That's uh, disappointing. They were the most interesting part of the whole show. Ah, yes, the classic move of saving the budget for the final episode so that it ends with a bang, and it shows with Neon High, Neon High, sh Neon Shadow. <laughs> Yep, yeah, they're my favorite just because they added a growl. That's cool, I appreciate that. Project Divas kick out one of their members because she causes quote unquote drama and they refuse to perform with her. So it's like a final two. And that's the last of Neon Shadow's gear. Wait, who the heck is that? 
Oh, wait, no. Now I remember. It's that character we haven't seen all season for some reason. Remember how Ainsley is leaving Rainbow High? They actually make up and start thinking that this may be healthy for them since they don't get along in the same program and there's too much competition. Oh yeah, that member of the Divas teams up with that one girl no one cares about to sing a solo so they don't get disqualified, but she's not part of the Divas, so does this even count? I don't know how this would actually work. Anyone, any, it, it's a good song, not my style. And then Royal Three performs, and don't get me wrong, solid song, but they're a K-pop group and it's not in Korean. I was expecting Korean with maybe some English, you know, like most of the real life songs. Oh, there is, there is, there is, there is, it's not that there's no Korean, but it's, it just heavily leans English. You can tell they specifically saved this song for the finale uh, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> K-pop is popular and they wanted to build up to it. <laughs> Even though next to no one on this season had any actual screen time or characterization that made an impression on anyone, and it ended up feeling like this is just another performance. It's not like the big hurrah to the season. It's just, oh yeah, here's the K-pop group. Regarding the unauthorized changes made to the Rainbow Divas performance, we have no choice but to disqualify the Rainbow Divas. That's cool. I still want the K-pop group to win. So now Rainbow High cannot win. That's cool. Whatever. Honestly, it would have been boring if Rainbow High won, seeing as the whole point of this is like, ah, Rainbow High keeps winning. We need to stop that. Uh, and they intentionally did this whole thing to make sure that it was fair. It would have been kind of dumb if Rainbow High won again, so I kind of saw that coming. Epic super cool build up trying to figure out who's the winner. OMG, everyone is casting their votes, and the winner is. Is the Royal Three from Sue Select. I knew it! You do not mess with K pop stands. They pull through, they pull up, and they don't pull out. I'd rather pick a fight with an actual gang member than a BTS stand after I said Jimin is only okay at best, because K pop fans consider that hate speech. Oh, and that's the end. They take their award, they smile in front of the camera, credits roll. The first half of this season gave me some hope, the latter half kinda sucked. This competition really did not pack a punch. I didn't know who to root for her. Nearly no one from the original cast was there, even though they made this whole big deal of Sunny being like, oh, I have an evil twin sister going to Shadow High. And then they just didn't expand on that whatsoever. It's like, yeah, here it is. And then the Shadow High people just did their own thing. And it's like, okay, was there not gonna be like a sibling rivalry happening? That, I completely forgot that was a thing until they had a tiny little scene of Sunny looking back at her sister and being like, hi, are we still friends? And her sister being like, ugh, I guess we are. But it's all done through like nods and eye rolls and stuff. So they don't actually communicate. And it's like, what the heck? This is this is what you're giving us? And the new characters were giving, given next to no character. <laughs> Season three really dropped the ball. I understand if you want to make new characters so that we go out to buy the dolls of them, but launching this many at us just made it ridiculous. I would have preferred you just had a bunch of random dolls on shelves with names I've never heard of and never seen in the show, rather than try to jam pack them all into one season and then completely forget about the original cast. There is no new Jade doll. I am upset. Also, there was that whole thing with junior high dolls that like didn't appear in the show and I figured they'd have like shorts about mini, about chat, mi, junior high, them. They probably do. And I probably just uh, didn't see them. Honestly, I'm probably sounding like an idiot right now. Hang on. Oh, it's probably in the Vi Life VIP episodes. Oh, I don't watch those. I see it now. Their, their thumbnails suck for the Vi Life. I don't know who's in charge of that, but you, mm, they aren't good. Speaking of dolls, that's right, we went out to get another doll. This time, the results were actually really surprising compared to part one of this series. For the first time, I actually got to be Passenger Princess. I, we decided not to take my car for the first time, so that was a pleasant surprise. Obviously, I had to get us some coffee because <laughs> if, if, if I'm being driven, I have to pay them back somehow, obviously. Sadly, we opted not to get dessert because it was also the red cup day, which I didn't think, I didn't know was a thing. So that was neat, I guess. Frankly, we barely have enough space for the mugs that we do have. So I'm not sure where we're gonna put this other than using it as a, as a holder for the burritos in my bag. Since we are not, since there's no music happening, show me your nails. Don't look at this man too close. They're so like adult. 
Thank you. I thought they were Thanksgiving Eve. No, where did you see not that I can't have nuts, but I I want to make a dirty joke so bad. I'm trying no. to I'm trying to keep it appropriate for. No, <laughs> not allowed. We were censored by my mom. Yeah. Oh, cursing. But fuck it. <laughs> you uh, a peach rings or hype sauce <laughs> kind of person. You see, this is what hurts because we don't support we don't support G Fuel. We support gamer subs. <gasps> We're not supposed to touch this. We're breaching contract. I, I am not under contract. I can say whatever the hell I want, but we don't support G Fuel because there was the like there was this weird thing where they just kind of cut contact with a bunch of their um, partners on YouTube, and it's weird. But like Sonic, it's so cool. I love Sonic. You got gold feist. I got gold feist. <gasps> It'll make you gold feist. Oh my god! Did I did you see the TikToks I sent you last night? Like this morning? No. <laughs> okay. Literally, it's one TikTok that's just people saying that the soundtrack for the new game is so fucking good. Like the, like the scene where you have the first boss battle and the music just hits so hard, you, it, it makes you feel like a god. Mm. Oh, it's so cool. I drove here. Yeah, My you drove. car. Your car. My music. Get used to it. But it doesn't matter. Okay. You know, we're getting butter, but if we get margarine, it's margarinely cheaper. Think about this it just seems very sexist. No, something about this seems like Hold on. He's helping. Barely. He's, this, he didn't even open the soap right. I mean, you can't open it. It's a toy. <laughs> Point is, they are a couple who are working together. He's shaving. Oh my god, really? <laughs> when you want to forget about your childhood and just go straight to adulthood, haha, ha, fun. I don't know if you saw him when you came to visit my family, but I have a little version of him that's not robotic. But. He's, this is robotic? Yeah. It says press here for something, and this one doesn't work. <laughs> it was cute until it screamed. That's his whole character. I know, but... I know Moana's your favorite, your favorite movie, mm -hmm. but... I don't like the chicken. <laughs> he's just the comic relief. And the movie, he's good. Everywhere else, he's not. Need for your Barbies. A tie dye machine? Yeah. Oh wait, that's super cute. I actually like that. Little, I like that a lot. That's a good idea. That's so cute. Oh my god. Oh, that's a that's a summer activity though. Oh, and then it comes with mystery mystery Barbies that you like the color reveal. I think it comes with no, it just comes with one. But it comes with one of these. That's crazy. Barbie's crazy. Love you, Barbie. There they are. We found it. We found them. We this found is them. the exact one that I that we were looking for. Ah, it is. Boom. Look at that. She okay. Okay. The uh, the the, the bubblegum has to like pop out too. Hot pop, pop bubblegum. Mm, yeah. It has to come out of the mouth, right? Yeah. I mean, I know it needs to be because you need to spit it out because you can't swallow it. But enough. These. <laughs> which one? Okay, we're gonna split these. Hang on. We're gonna split them. I get one. You get the other. Which one do you want? Veronica or Naomi? Bubblegum girl or non-bubblegum girl? They're so cute, both of them. I don't know. I, know. I was going to tell them a number in my head. Like, this one is even, or this one is odd, or whatever. And then just have you pick a number. Okay, better idea. What if I say I want that one? No! Is that the one you wanted? I mean, I want both of them, but like, okay, fine. What? The, what? How is it? Why are you upset then? I would have been upset with whatever you picked. We both want both of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm making it easy because we can't decide. She's cute. I'm gonna lose the bubblegum thing. Me. <laughs> so I might as well, because I like her outfit better. I do too. You do too? I mean, I like the fur jacket, but I like her shoes better. Oh, oh no, those I are sock things. I love her shoes. The whole, the whole hologram, not snakeskin, but like cracked. Yeah. Uh, those are boots that I would wear, but like sequins, ew. Bubblegum, cute. That's unique. I like her makeup, but I th honestly, she looks way more just depressed and sad, and I vibe. She does. I think it's because her head's out of the box, but... Yeah. Ooh, look at that four-pack. What? Oh, wait, that's so cool. 
I like Heather's outfit in that one better. You get Natasha, who is very bland and boring. Yeah. But you get Heather Grayson, which is like... I've not seen her, I think. <laughs> you can't see my pointing to you. You smell good. <laughs> There's so many characters that do not leave an impression that we're having trouble remembering what band they're from, except for Neon Shadow because they're the coolest. <laughs> I mean, duh. Yeah. Yeah, I hope they do something more with the Pacific Coast one because they did nothing. They had like an episode to introduce Paris Hilton and that's all they are. That's all they are. I hope um, they have more of the band, I guess. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I've seen all of them except for this girl. Karma Nichols. Nichols. Nichols? Karma. 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 Look at the hair. Oh, ew. We don't care. We already have her, we but have the, the whole band's here is what I'm saying. Okay, neat. We already have her. <sighs> thank you. And thank you. <laughs> That was not me, that was you. Okay, now we can kiss. I probably should have done that first. I don't care. Yeah, you kissed me during worse. <laughs> you kissed me when I was literally... I kissed you when you were sick. And then I kissed you when you were sick. Yeah, because you, you knew you weren't going to get sick again, because I got you sick. <laughs> Immune. You, you, you were safe. I wasn't. It's like that Pierce the Veil song. No, wait, is it Pierce the Veil? Yeah. Yes? I don't care if you're sick, I don't care if you're contagious, I would kiss you even if you were dead. That's necrophilia. Oh, it's a puffer fish? It's an angler fish. Angler fish. I know what I said. I said the right thing. Easton! Easton is a trans mask icon because only the females have the lights. Oh shoot, what? So many people don't know that. Did you hear the thing? Queer cardinals in every um, I Christmas love card. That. Yeah, where male cardinals are all red, and so and female cardinals are either yellow or brownish. Yeah, and so every single Christmas card, one has two red cardinals. It's like ah, a queer couple. The gays. The gays. Oh, that's just the great. gays are invading Christmas. It's true. We've no. been doing it from we've been doing it like this entire time. But this is so cool, and it's on sale. You save thirty bucks. Wow. Why are three different people from three different bands in there? Because they get along, unlike you, with other bands. Some people know how to band. work. Well, when you're in a band and you don't get along with people, take a note from the people on Rainbow High. It's hot in there. It is hot in here. I mean, I am wearing Under Armour. How much? How much? Like, how many layers are you wearing? I'm wearing two pairs of pants and two shirts. I'm wearing two pants and two shirts also. <laughs> no wonder we're hot. <laughs> I mean, I'm always hot, and you're hot too. You should, you should Every get time it. I turn the camera towards you, you just have less clothes. Later today. <laughs> Glad I didn't record that part. <laughs> and you said I can't make dirty jokes. Why is there still mermaid stuff coming out? Like I have, I didn't, I, I didn't see this. The color change salon spa. I definitely didn't see her. I'm sorry. I got my fingers stuck in here. I that off camera, I actually did. I was trying to press the button before you were filming, and I actually couldn't, and my finger was stuck for a little bit, and then you started filming, and then I pressed the button, and I freaked out. Welcome. Let me start the, the grill up for us, and cook us, a, cook us a nice meal. Is this what you want me to get you for Christmas? Yes. I'm having a pretty time. You're washing your hands, though. There's not even a faucet. You don't know that. And yes! They got Naruto underwear and Sanic underwear? You know, all like- Miles! Miles Morales underwear? What the heck? They have all the houses except Hufflepuff. That's racist. That's why we don't like Harry Potter. They can't even treat their own fandom right. They don't. Let alone the trans community. <laughs> Can you imagine? If um, it's getting hot and spicy, you take off my clothes and you find this on me. Hell yeah. When they say like ultra cool softness, they, they mean it. I can just feel it's like that, that kind of material that, that breathes really well. Oh yeah, the, like the, it's dry fit almost. Stretch fabric. I am legitimately thinking of getting this. <laughs> A Sonic video. Is this how you want me to dress? Yes. <laughs> that is so cool. 
and now it's even better. Oh my gosh, wait. And it's good flannel, what? Yeah, and they painted it on so it's gonna stay there. Is this wool? It just says marble. It's marble material? <laughs> That's so good. That's really good. Right? And it fits with the theme of the video instead of Sonic shit. There's a lot of them. Yeah, wow. I would, I would black get salmon. one if I, I would get one if it wasn't expensive. Yeah, I'd get a lot of these if it weren't expensive. I wish I had more money. There's a lot of things I'd get if it wasn't expensive. Please send us money at www.101.internetstreet.com. Patreon.com slash negative legends. That's it. <laughs> this one's just a charm. This is literally a call art for your finger. Well, that community needs less obvious ways to express themselves. The whole point is that it's obvious and you can't tell. This is even more ob- this is even- well, this is obvious, but you can't tell even more. Toe rings. Toe rings. You. <laughs> Preppy cool. Sounds to me like an oxymoron. Bitch. And we're back. Woo! Honestly, I have- I, I was really thinking about getting Onyx or like some like a Shadow High character that was actually fully black and white and not sort of black and white, but kind of has a co some color like I did last time. But I couldn't, <laughs> they just they just don't appeal to me. I know some people in the last video were like, better show, but worse dolls, how dare you? I love the dolls and I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're having a good time. I'm not, except for these. So if I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna have, and I wanna have a good time, I'm gonna get the dolls that I actually want. Funny enough, I remember now, I wanted to get the, the twin pack of the other twins. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And I never did. Probably because they're expensive. Is it goth? It's, it's black. It's hard to tell subcultures now. There's so many different like subcategories of subcultures. You got dark academia ones. And in case this is not dark academia, <laughs> I know. don't know. <laughs> and if anybody was wondering if I actually bought the Sonic underwear, I did. And if you're wondering why the front one is different than last time, <laughs> boom. Now we get the absolute joy of dog. Now we get the absolute joy of opening up the box. Come Veronica, Veronica. She has hair stuck in her mouth. <laughs> this is what happens when you chew gum. Yeah, but also like I can't get the gum out. Is it stuck in there? <gasps> I think it's actually supposed to be. St I think I don't think it comes out. Look, there's even glue on her chin. She looks like oil. <gasps> She's. There are oil spills. There are oil spills. That explains. Like literally, they are the colors. That's so. That's a great idea. That's really cool. I really like it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> Bendy and the Ink Machine Girls. The hair stuck in her mouth is going to annoy me. Well, then again, I'm not keeping this one. This one's yours. Really? Yeah, we agreed on that already. I know, but the viewers don't know that. Yes, they do. <laughs> now, knowing that it's an oil spill kind of character, these are, like, these designs are incredible. This is such a smart idea. There's some, there's only crunchiness in the ends of the hair, so everywhere else is pretty okay. Um, there is one little flaw with the bow in the left where it's just uh, it's just like chipped yeah, That may be able to be scratched off or maybe it is scratched off I don't think it's scratched off. I think you can probably fix that a little bit of a bummer, but it's Unnoticeable the only downside when it comes to buying the dual packs is that there's never a alternative outfit I mean, you can switch their outfits if you want, but they're supposed to be twins, so they do have different makeup. And they have different colored doll stands. Their makeup is hardly different. Their freckle sizes are different. That's new. Their earrings are different. Their nails are different colors, but same designs. They both have French tips. And unlike some of the other nails I've seen on some of the dolls, these are actually perfect. These actually look really good. And they they also have rings, that of which are molded plastic in with the hand. The, I love these dolls. These look great. The buttons are actually sewn in. The, uh, the stitching is amazing. I mean, I'm not sure how much I can say of Rainbow High dolls that I haven't said about every other doll that they've made. Each, it, uh, I wonder how much how much effort the hair took because you can see on the on the on the scalp like each individual strand or is one of three different colors and it alternates as it goes down the as it goes down the head and that may be easy. I've seen them. I've seen the machines they have where it's just a special sewing machine where it just slams the hair into the head. It's not like one of those one of a kind dolls where. 
It's a little Velcro to open it. It is little Velcro, and it has a little piece of paper to keep its shape. Unlike the uh, Monster High doll where it's, well, I mean, those are Playline dolls, so they don't really count, but with Monster High, it's just a piece of plastic that you can open up, which is it's hard to open it up. <laughs> or the Ever After High dolls. And I have um, Cerise Wood. Hood? Oh my god. <laughs> she has a little picnic basket that can open with the hinges, but this is the first time where it's actually like a purse with like fabric and actual purse designs. I think the Velcro idea is actually pretty standard when it comes to Rainbow High. Oh. Their stands are slightly different colors too, so that's interesting. There are certain parts of the um, embroidery that kind of stick out. You know when you sew something and you have, uh, when you started, when, the area where you start sewing, there's like one thread that just really sticks out and it's like you gotta cut it to cut it down to the make it flush with the fabric. Sometimes they don't do that with these, uh, which is fine. I just I just trimmed it off. Other than that, I don't see any problems with these dolls. I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm like, with the quality of Rainbow High dolls, I'm trying to find where they could possibly go wrong. I think, I think having the bubble gum glued into the mouth is a little weird. I am a little upset that the that her chin is actually shinier because you can see the glue. It's, it's, it's an odd design choice. You're not gonna lose it. And I get it'd be kind of weird having like a hole in the mouth. If you could take the, if you could take the bubble gum out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna force it out. No, you really? I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. Oh, yeah, no, it is formed to her mouth. It's formed to her mouth. It's not even like a plug with a little hole. It's like- So if you, if you try to tear it off, you'll tear off her lips. Yeah, it, we'll show you in the close-ups, but like, there's not a peg, it is flesh. Yep, oh my gosh, it is. Man, that's so weird. How did they manage to do that? I have no idea. That's cool. This Damn. one's more blue and this one's more purple. Oh, they are. With the doll that I chose, Naomi, with a superior outfit design. What? She actually has a, like a, a clutch, which, I, I hate clutches. Clutches are so stupid. It's funny how they did it because it's not designed for her to hold on to. There is a little loop on top of it that you just slide your slide the hand into, which honestly, I feel like if you do get a clutch, that would make clutches a lot easier to hold like in real life. And now I don't know if I can get it back on her hand. The downside is that when it came to the previous Rainbow High doll that I reviewed with me on Shadow, these sort of studs usually popped off so easily in the other one. These, I haven't seen any popping off. These all look like they're solidly glued on. I'm realizing that the quality of just this, these, this, these dolls are better. Also, the box design was just easier to open. I'm not sure if I just got lucky with opening it. The heel and the shoe and the, with, with their boots is actually like connected. Uh, it's, looks like it's glued on, which is a little upsetting. Can I take these off? Oh, these are so much easier to take off. They retain their shape really good. They, like the only plastic is here. Everything else is actually a cloth. Now I'm just wondering how easy it is to put it back on. On the leather bits here, this is actually holographic. Like this actually reflects light and uh, refracts it. Like way better than, I think this is, I think this is the best quality rainbow high dolls I've ever reviewed. I'm only noticing a couple little things. The mouth, like the mouth, the lipstick kind of looks kind of wonky on her. But yeah, I don't think there's that many like actual big details, big noticeable details that are wrong with it. Compared to the last doll that I reviewed where literally pieces of the clothing were just falling off. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how the, how the actual, like the, the freckles are different sizes. On the um, eyeshadow where it goes, there's the black eyeshadow. It goes the rainbow design. There is a black line above that. That is actually glitter glued onto it. There is a very small stippling. Like there is a matte, dots on the skin that will, or no, the skin is matte and there's dots that are slightly glossier. So if you put it in the light, it actually looks more like a skin texture or maybe that she's wearing like glitter over her face, but it's not actually glitter. These dolls are awesome. They put so much thought into these. So the Veronica dolls outfit comes with this kind of reminds me of Chanel pattern, the little bit of the suit, like the, you know, the pink Chanel girl. I'm always like, that looks like Chanel. Yep. This is like, the purple version of it. Um, it's an open jacket and skirt set. And then it has little feather details at the three quarters sleeve. Um, and they are real feathers. I think they're probably like chicken feathers, probably. Sure. Um, and then it ha she has a little leather crop top. It is also holographic. It is 
Oh yeah, it is. It's yeah. Perfect. Her leather crop top is the same leather as her socks. Um, and it has uh, one, a little S emblem right on the cinch of the boobs and then an H right at the waistband. So it says shadow high. Um, and then her shoes come with, they're little sandals. They're not too detailed. They have little studs at the back, but showstopper are her leather socks that match her sister's boots. And uh, the spikes on the back of the sandals match the hairband. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot that part. Naomi has a little bit of it, it's a little bit similar. Uh, she has a fur coat with these studs, belts almost, um, lining it so that it comes, it just a, a little bumpy pattern. Um, the fur is really soft. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's really, really soft. Um, and then she has the same matching leather studs on her two-piece set. It is a crop top skirt set. It's just like a wrap skirt. Her two little emblems are like... Hearts with wings or skulls? It kind of looks like Greek. Oh, it is. Those. Yeah, it's a it's a Greek statue face. Yeah, so, some guy. From some Greek. person. <laughs> um, she doesn't have any hair accessories. Her earrings are these big hoops. Yeah. They are incredible. And then she has matching with her big hoop earrings, uh, almost glass shattered uh, knee high sock boots that are one whole boot as you've seen. <laughs> well done. I'm taking this purse. No! This one's gonna go back to my hometown where I spend the summers and then this one's gonna stay where we are and it'll be like they're in a long distance relationship like we are when we're in summer. Yeah, you have air in your mouth. Just like your doll. Let me know what you think of Rainbow High Season 3. Tell me if you agree or disagree with any of my opinions on the dolls. I still think the black and white idea was poorly executed. Good idea, bad execution. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay beautiful and keep playing.